Hello and welcome uh, from Tokyo to Pachakshi Night 171. Um, this is uh, Aspie Klein. And this is Mark Dyson. And, and we are Klein Dyson <laughs> Architecture over here in Tokyo. <laughs> we normally do this from a large stage, huh? <laughs> so yeah, w welcome to uh, an a, a, a at-home version of uh, Pachakshi Night. And we're really glad that you can join us. Um, things have changed, obviously, all around the world. This is our third or fourth Pachacha from Tokyo. Uh, if you go to the next slide, Brian, things on um, things are, uh, oh, and you can go to the next one too. Um, things really changed in the beginning of April. Uh, we went from having a uh, hundred events uh, uh, a month around the world. In our, uh, we're in over one thousand two hundred cities now, and we have about a hundred events a month. And it was a really vibrant moment in, in uh, fe February. Uh, we celebrated 2020 on the 20th of February, 2020. That was our last big live event in Tokyo. Little did we know uh, that the next month, all of our events would be canceled. Go to the next slide, Brian. And Astrid can say that a little bit in Japanese. あの、フシギな感じてやっぱりしますので、え、今年はなんかそのえ、パラーンっていうやっぱり世界中のあのペチャクチャナイトでえ、オンステージでやっぱりえ、カンセルなりました。でもあのえ、なんかすごいあの、驚いたなのが逆にみんなオンラインでもっと こう、なんか盛り上がってきたんですね。で、えっと、私たちも今日あの、東京だけではなくて、やっぱりなんか海外にいらっしゃるあの、プレゼンターのもあの、え、プレゼンテーションできるし、え、逆に海外からあの、お
あのいるんですが、えー、でもなんかあの問題なくいつもやっぱりビジュアルでななんかとても大事なので、えー、ときっとみんなあの、えー全部わかるんじゃないかなと思ってます。えー、で、えー、今日はあのプレゼンターたちで八人なので、さすが始めましょうかな。そうですね。はい。えっ、ー、と最初のプレゼンターがあの、えー、福田愛子さんなんですね。で、えー、彼女はあの、えーすごいイラストレーターですね。なんかあのやっぱり、えー、なんか優しさってとっても伝わってくるんですが、なんかこんな大変なあの時期で、なんかあの、えー、やっぱりこうあのラブリーなことってえっ、ー、と見えてくると。あのなんか元気になるんじゃないかなと思いますので、えー、と福田さんのその一人だと思うんですがぜひ、えー、とよろしくお願いいたします。Are you ready, 福田さんはい、I'm ready. <笑> okay, 福田さん、you need to unmute there.Fu g u r u s a n can we hear you?You need to say a little couple of words.Hi, everybody.、Uh, Are you ready to go? Can you see the image? I do. Oh, we can't hear you for some reason. No?、Uh, we, we can hear you fine. We can hear you. Can you just say a few words just to check you're alive?、Martin. Hello, Kukurasan. <laughs> Hi. Kikoi Maska. I, I hear you. Yes, we but, can hear.、Yeah. We can、okay. hear. Oh, it's okay.、Uh, it's okay. We, can't, we can't. It's just, we've got a, I have Okay.、Issue. All right. We're going to mute Mark and ask. Hold、her. on one second. We have an issue on our side, Brian. Hold on. Okay. Okay. All right. We're good. We yes, can hear you. Yes. Hear you for yes. Okay. We're, we're aware of that. We're going to go for it. Fukuda san. Hi. I'm going to mute Mark and ask her. I'm going to mute myself. Okay. Over to you. Okay. So, hi everyone. I'm Aiko Fukuda、uh, from Tokyo. I'm an illustrator, mixed media artist, and a recent member of Adobe Creative Residency, which I just finished in this May. I've been a full time freelance illustrator for seven years, and tonight I'm talking about how I started my career and what's possible with the illustration. So, yeah, this is me. I was born and raised in Japan. I loved drawing since I was a kid, and, but I couldn't draw well compared to I draw now. So, I'd never thought that I want to be an illustrator at that time. When I was a high school student, I was into fashion and street culture, so I flew to the US to study、uh, graphic design there. So, one day, my host family and I had the opportunity to dinner together, and we stopped by、uh, Book and Novel. My host family was so kind, so they gave me $10 and said, You can buy whatever you want. And so I bought Nylon Magazine, and I really impressed by the beautiful illustration they had, and wanna be the, they made me want to be illustrator. And、uh, this is、um, the drawing、uh, when I was、uh, in college. <laughs> yeah. And then after I came back to Tokyo,、um, uh, I started doing the job hunting. But it was like after the bankruptcy of Re Lehman Brothers happened. So I had a hard time finding a job. So I asked myself why I kept fa failing my job hunting and realized that I needed to learn, learn basic、uh, drawing skills. And so I started、uh, going to the、uh, drawing class. and To you know, develop my、uh, drawing skill more. And a couple years later, I changed my job to artistic director at some IT company in Tokyo. And I moved to Manila、uh, to be an expert to fund a creative department there. And,、um, and then,、um, but、um, uh, I didn't like the job. <laughs> so uh, after I uh, completed uh, my、um, The、uh, expert experience. I、uh, came back to Japan again and quit my job and、uh, jumped into what I love. And so,、um, so yeah, this is、uh, my first commission for the Brutus magazine. And uh, this uh, commission job I took 
uh, almost a year to get a job. But luckily, once I'm done the magazine job, uh, people kept calling me so I could be a full time freelance illustrator. But and one day I went to a new exhibition called Bjork Digital uh, using virtual reality that smashed my head and realized that this is future. And until then, my drawing was completely made by analog, but I started using iPad Pro to uh, uh, draw uh, the digitally and experiencing uh, how I can have handmade feeling into my digital drawing. And since I studied uh, digital drawing, my work became experimental. I wondered what is possible with my illustration and paper. Uh, this question opened my curiosity door and created CD poster here. I exhibited this poster for my solo show in Tokyo and the people took a 3D paper glasses on and ex experienced it. Most of the people saw what's going on, but suddenly so, some people didn't. So I created another poster. Uh, this one, I uh, used the retro reflective printing technique. So basically people take picture of my work with, uh, with the press, so something will come up. And my curiosity goes deeper. I started using different uh, kinds of paper for this image. I used transparency paper to create butterflies and play with, uh, with the shadow. And uh, what about this? Um, okay, another question. What if my uh, illustration uh, is already three dimensional? So I created uh, the first uh, pop up book kinds of style of illustration. And uh, Faber Castell sponsored me to have my solo show in their boutique in Tokyo Midtown. So I borrowed one of their shelf and put my work there. And my name. Uh, uh, this uh, exhibition was called yeah, Cabinet of Curiosity. And the pop-up show, uh, this is the sort of show for uh, uh, the New York exhibition. And I created the stand uh, glass kinds of um, illustration, but it's actually uh, uh, put in the window. And here's my residency project. During my residency, I've explored using different kinds of technology like AR to develop my new A of illustration. So I created AR virtual garden at uh, San Fran Adobe San Francisco office. Next one, I tried to create AR pop-up book. This time I use actual book, but my illustration is in AR so that it looks like AR pop-up book. At this moment, I didn't realize the uh, story inside. So next time when I create pop-up book, I want to relate to the story. And here's the moment that people can literally dive into my illustration. I created an Adobe create, Creative Residency booth for Adobe Max Los Angeles and Japan. And for this concept, uh, uh, this is the place that our residents uh, can live together since we live uh, separately, uh, like now. So I'm glad that it all came together. And this is the uh, outside of the wall. And I'm so glad that uh, people uh, stop by and take a break outside of our house. And overall, I'm obsessed with the possibility of the illustration and technology. My creative journey is still on its way, but I hope you enjoy my presentation and encourage you to follow your uh, intuition and curiosity. Thank you guys so much and Pechakcha for having me tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Perfect. You. <laughs> 本当になんかこんなにバタフライでいっぱいいるとなんか元気になりますね。あのなんかAR でもなんかあちこちとってなんかなんかあのえとっても良いなとまあ福田さんもねピンクドレスであのもう元気させますね。ありがとうございます。あ
So my passion uh, was about the possibility of the illustration and also using AR. So yeah, basically I, you know, dig into the possibility of uh, augmented reality and mixing my, you know, uh, illustration to in integrate uh, new ways of art. Well, anyway, you've got a big fan. Chris over in Port Portland said he really loves your work. So um, oh, yeah. people are watching from all around the world tonight. So <laughs> really so great. Much. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay, so we're on to our next presenter. Who oh, is uh, Keichiro Yuri. And um, as with Pachakcha, what's interesting is we meet people around town and uh, we met Yuri only a few days ago at uh, the 15th anniversary of one of our projects. And so uh, he had his portfolio with him and he was, he was dressed amazingly and had these amazing accessories and he said, you've got to present. So He stood out, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's how it happens. So we meet people uh, in all sorts of different ways and they've all got a fantastic story to tell. So over to you. Okay, Chiro, you ready? Hi, okay, this. Okay, this guy. Okay, over to you. <笑>こんばんは。ケイチロー先生のユリケイチローです。本日は私の作品を見ていただきながら気ままにお話ししたいと思います。どうぞお付き合いよろしくお願いします。日本最大のカバンの産地、兵庫県の豊岡に拠点
応用しました。私がものづくりにあたり、日々心がけていることがあります。ものづくりのキーワードとして、カバンと服の素材の融合、カバンと服の工法の融合、伝統工芸とテクノロジーの融合、融合、つまりジャンルをフリーにして、ボーダレスにすることです。何かと何かを衝突させて化学反応を起こして新たな価値を生む常識に縛られるのではなく常に新鮮な気持ちで真摯にものづくりに向き合い発見を楽しむことを心がけています。最も重要なワードは発想の自覚です。発想の自覚ができなければ形になりません。個性とは生き様だと思います。他人が私の容姿を見て自然に感じられているなら素敵ではありませんか。日々世界にアンテナを向けてます。素材や道具の開発。プロダクト制作の段取り、プロモーションの展開など、やることは山積みです。制限を持たず、過去、未来と時間軸を飛び越えて、想像していこうと思います。諦めません。自分が納得するまで戦おうと思います。正直に進んでいきます。コロナ禍の中、新しいショーの準備をしています。近いうちに皆様にお披露目ができると思います。新しいエンターテインメントの仕掛けをご用意いたします。新作のウェアバッグを披露します。ぜひ、私のホームページをチェックしてみてください。www.keichiroyuri.com最後に、皆様、ご清聴ありがとうございました。コロナに負けず頑張りましょう。スライドだったと思うんで。ああ、that's the last slide。Okay、it was a bit stuck, I think. <笑>これからこのプレゼンテーションはあのウ,ェウェブサイトアップしますでこの,このページで全部のリンク。
So um, I have two introductions to do here. One is to introduce Brian, um, who is uh, runs Protector, uh, helps run Protector here at Protector Global, and he's been looking after these Protector Inspire uh, broadcasts all around the world from zero from zero to hero. That's Brian uh, over there in Kabukicho. You should have your mask on if you're in Kabukicho, Brian. Yeah, um, I know. I, I've, um, I can pass I've, mine across I'm, to you if you want. You know, I have anyway. the. Uh, I've already had it, so I've got the uh, antibodies, <laughs> and I'm 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 playing. So yeah. So so one of the interesting things with uh, these these Zoom uh, protectors is that we can invite other speakers from around the world. So um, Brian is going to introduce um, uh, the next presenter because I think it's one of your, your friends. That's right, Brian. Yeah, I, why don't I do that? So thanks so much for that introduction, Mark. And um, I'm going to talk here for a second. My, I'm, um, I, so it, this is one of these really interesting moments where we, get, we do get to, one of the fun things about this, uh, this Zoom way of connecting with everybody is that we can see into everybody's rooms and we can see what's going on and what your office looks like and the place you create is like and we can also uh invite in as mark said presenters from anywhere else around the world and i'm very i've been telling my friend aaron who i know in tokyo i don't want to go on here too long but i've been telling him forever that he should make a presentation on our, on our <laughs> website which you can now do and um but now i have the opportunity to invite him to our our uh, stage which is a, a really great honor and it's not really too off the mark because Aaron, though he's in New York right now, lived in Japan for a number of years, and I'll let him talk about that. But I want to say one last thing before I hand it over. I am I have the great fortune of meeting so many creative people in this in this job, and uh, I sometimes I'm I'm just overwhelmed with the. Um, obsession that some of our presenters have it's they, they they make things not because they want to but because they have to they can't stop and Aaron is one of the most prolific and one of the most obsessed artists I know and all he all I think he does is make art and whether it's photography or collage or um or a painting or digital mixed media all kinds of stuff um, I really encourage you to follow him because uh, his, he's a, a wellspring or however you say that of creativity. And it's just such an honor to have him on the call. So Aaron, thank you for being here. You need to unmute yourself. I'm going to unmute you and, um, and I'm going to mute myself. And Aaron, are you, are you kind of, are you on the call here? Yeah. I am totally ready. All yeah. right. I'm, thank you again. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, would you please give a warm welcome to my very good friend, Aaron Marin. Hey, all right. Konnichiwa, Ohio Design Boss for me. Um, I am from New York. Uh, as Brian said, I did uh, live in Japan for uh, a few years, uh, both uh, in the cooking industry um, and a bartender, but then um, for a while as a officer in the US Navy. So um, as Brian said, uh, my name, I create collages under the name New Tokyo. Uh, that's how you can find me on Instagram. My work is based on black identity. Uh, my collages are created both uh, through digital and analog means and sometimes a mixture uh, of each other. So how did I get into collage? Well, like all good artists, uh, it starts with a little bit of pain. Uh, I stumbled into collage after coming out, unfortunately, um, of a failed marriage. I had crash landed back in the United States after over a decade uh, living overseas, both working in the military and in the hospitality industry um, in Asia and as well as in uh, Europe. Um, my first love uh, was film photography. It was something I think I did well um, and at that time being a little bit lost and a little bit aimless, I knew I needed to heal. And I understood that art has that transformative property, uh, on your soul. Um, I needed to, I wanted to create, but the art form photography, um, at the time was tied to kind of some painful memories. Um, the beauty of collage, however, is that it allowed me to use images, patterns, colors, textures, and essentially create a photograph. A lot of my work is still a portrait of sorts. Um, my early work uh, was rough and you're not seeing that. Um, and it was raw. Uh, the ability to use the tools to create what was in my mind's eye, uh, it just wasn't there. My taste was killer, 
um, but my skills were not. Um, over time, through a few years, lots of torn magazines and used glue sticks, uh, days sequestered in my favorite cafe, which I called my art studio, um, making work hunched over at a dining room table at all hours of the night, my ability to master my tools improved. Um, and miraculously, the pain was gone. I had found a new love in art and I was ready to say something, but what? I noticed that many of the sources of images that I used for my collage, you know, fashion magazines, travel magazines, art and leisure, um, new and vintage, they didn't have me in it. And by me, I mean my blackness. And so therefore in my art, there wasn't me in there either. Um, so, you know, I liked the pretty pictures that I had made and others liked it too, but I don't think it was saying anything personal. So I had to learn, I had to teach myself. I had to begin to search of, out other artists like myself, other black artists and via the almighty tool of Google, uh, and the ancient tool of the library card, um, both were excellent tools that allowed me to learn. And I found a lot and I listened and I learned about the thought black artists had behind what they made and why they made it. And I took what I needed and I left the things that I didn't. And then I began to make new art and that new art is what you're seeing here. Um, and healed and armed with that knowledge and something to say, I realized there was still something missing. There was something I still needed to share. And much like this night tonight and this idea of creating community and, and, and communing with other artists, I knew I needed to create something like that personal for myself. Instagram is a great you know, uh, uh, tool for sharing. And I started using it initially pretending that my page was a fine arts gallery where I had to rotate the work every two weeks. But Instagram still isn't real. You can't touch it. And most of the time it's on your screen and then it's not with just a swipe of a hand. And then I remembered what my old photography instructor once told me. If you don't print photographs, you're not a real photographer. So that's what I did with my work. I printed a lot. I printed on five by seven postcards, and then I messaged all my friends, family, and random people that I had met on Instagram, asking if they wanted free art. I just needed their address. And most said yes. I got a few no's and a few no response. But armed with about 80 names and addresses, I started sending them off. On one side, my artwork, and on the other side, a poem from some of my favorite poets. And the beautiful part was the feedback of people saying how much they loved receiving art in the mail, as it was often the only mail they got. You know, usually we're getting bills and junk mail and adverts. And I think that is kind of the summation of, 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 of what art has meant to me, both as a healing tool, both as a tool to learn and to discover for oneself, and then also as a tool to create community, which I think is the spirit in which tonight is all about. And if I could leave you with something, if time permits, I would like to leave you with one of these poems by one of my favorite poets, Gwendolyn Brooks um, from the Harlan Renaissance. And it starts off like this. The pool players, seven at the golden shovel. We real cool. We left school. We lurk late, we strike straight, we sing sin, we thin gin, we jazz June, we die soon. And so I'd like to leave you just watching a few of the images scroll by. I know I'm probably a little bit under time, but you know, as Mark beautifully said, if you've understood nothing of what I said, if everything that I said was Greek, the pictures speak for themselves. I thank you for the opportunity. I thank you for the ability to share my art and to converse with others and uh, have a good evening. Woohoo! Wow, amazing. So lovely, so lovely. Um, I, I
なんかちょっと日本語で言えばあのアロンはなんかやっぱりこうインスタグラムで、えー、となんかよく自分のアートって見,見せたんですけれどもでも一番なんかこう自分で盛り上がってた時はやっぱりこうインスタグラムでなんか触ることができなくて、えー、ちゃんと具体的にあの、えー、人にその自分のアートあのはがきサイズで送れることできた時があのでそこを送った人たちが一番なんかこう喜んでた時がなんかあの一番あのなんという、えー、自分で、えーあのえー、喜んでたんですねすごいなんかその嬉しさってとっても分かりますね。あの確かその、えー、特に今ってあんまり人が会えないとかあのもしかして、えー、と長い間にあのお家でいる時があのまたなんかはがき送ろうかなというまたレッター書こうかなという感じで、うん、あのやっぱり最近のみんなの郵便箱が結構悲しいんだよね。ダイレク DM しか入ってないとかまたどこかのなんか電気代とかあのそういうのばっかりとかしか入ってないんですよねだからぜひなんかあのアートワークって入ってたら大喜びだよね。We talk a lot about creativity and passion but I think you touched on a very important word which was healing and I think you know at this moment healing is, is really important in all senses of the world、uh, whether it's for COVID or Black Lives Matter And, and, and the art, art is something that you read into it what you want. You're not told, you don't have to read it, and the words don't say anything. The arts, the art, it is what you want it to be. And those images were extremely powerful. Thank you very much.、Uh, loving the color as well. Oh, man. It was a great presentation. And Mark, I think you, you just nailed it. I, 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 I、um, was working with Aaron on this, and he, he basically. John Lennon、uh, said that somebody showed up at his house one time and said, like, That song that you wrote, it was for me. You know, you, how did you know it was about me? <laughs> But、uh, John said, It's just, you know, it's whatever you make of it. And I think Aaron was saying, You know, every one of these slides should be whatever it is to everybody who wants to enjoy it. And you obviously that rang through. And I just, because Aaron rapped a little bit, I just wanted to put his,、uh, I wanted to put his,、um, Uh, Instagram back up on the screen, real quick. So、uh, that was his la last slide, and we just wrapped it up there. So、um, please、uh, go check out New Tokyo, and we'll add everybody's、uh, social deets down here in the,、uh, in the YouTube、uh, description at the end of the presentation. So thanks so much for that. All right. Fantastic.、Thank、Great、you. job. And thanks for speaking to us at, at seven o'clock in the morning in New York. Yes. <laughs> I can see it's nice and light out there. It's very <laughs> dark here in Tokyo. <laughs> okay. Onwards. <laughs> All right. And maybe I introduce you in English because you're going to present in,、uh, in Japanese.、Ah, yeah. I think. Yeah, thank you very much.、Uh, so, Sasaki san, I, I saw,、uh, I can't remember whether it was on Instagram or somebody wrote,、uh, I think、uh, Spoon and Tamago wrote about you. And uh,、um, uh, Sasaki san does some amazing things on a daily basis. <laughs> I just couldn't believe that she would do that before breakfast. <laughs> and,、uh, and how and what, that, what she then achieved, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine her actually biting into it. It's so beautiful. And uh, anyway, uh, I think I teased it enough. <laughs>、uh, please have a good look and enjoy Sasaki san's presentation. And the images will say everything one more yes, time. Yes, definitely, <laughs>、okay. definitely.、All、Over、right. to you. Hi. Thanks for the nice introduction. Ah, Mina san, hajime maste. Konban wa Sasaki Manami to mo shimas. Otashi wa Tokyo de designer to artist to ste katsudo ste o limas. 突然ですが、皆さんには朝の習慣がありますでしょうか例えばお弁当を作ったりとか、本を読んだり、ヨガをしてみたり、いろいろな習慣があるかと思います。今、コロナウイルスが世界中に広まっています。私が暮らす東京も例外ではなくて、普段は混み合う街に人がいなくなりました。こ
この景色はまるで SF 映画に迷い込んでしまったみたいで不思議な感覚になりますステイホームが合言葉となり長い時間を自,自宅で過ごす日々皆さんはこの非常事態の今をどのように過ごされていますでしょうか私はこの環境ですっごく怠けてしまいました勤務しているデザイン会社まで片道1時間半かけていたんですけれども在宅勤務になったので起きる時間遅くなってしまってでなんだか体もだるくなってしまってそこで在宅勤務で不規則になってしまった生活を整えるために朝早く起きる習慣を作ろうと思いました私の朝ごはんは生まれてから27年間ずっとトーストでしたじゃあこのトースト1枚にとことんこだわってみるのはどうだろうコリションの私ならきっと朝起きることが楽しくなるはずそう思ったんです一日のエンジンをかけるために朝食をもっともっとクリエイティブに次の日の朝に作った初めてのこだわりのトーストがこちらです今年はコロナでお花見ができなかったけれど来年はみんなで見れますようにという願いを込めています具材はチョコレートとブルーベリーを混ぜた特製ジャムです朝に自分の時間を作ることで一日の集中力がすごく高まるし実際に作ってみて楽しかったのでこれを習慣化しようと決めましたそしてこだわりのトーストは50枚を超えました毎日作っているけどあそれって嫌にならないのってたまに聞かれるんですけどあの私はこう作ることって睡眠と同じで一日寝ないのは我慢できるけど2日寝ないと体調が悪くなるみたいな感じです日常的に作り続けることは私の心に栄養を与えてくれることですで昔から私は日本文化が好きなんですけれどもトーストのテーマによく選んでいますトーストを作るのに最短でも2時間半ぐらいかかるので好きなものではないと集中ができないんですまた日本文化の意味合い美しさっていうものを分かち合いたいという気持ちで SNS のコメント欄に説明文を書いて発信しています例えば左側のテーマは家紋なんですけれども江戸時代に栄えた家を象徴するマークでしてこのお家にゆとりのあすいませんゆかりのあるモチーフを作ったデザインになっています右側は金継ぎで壊れてしまった陶磁器を修復する伝統技法です左側が金魚右側が浮世絵です私はトーストで使う具材とテーマの関わりを大切にしています具材それぞれが持つみずみずしさだったり華やかさだったりそういうものとあと金魚というテーマが持つイメージやムードが掛け合わさった時にトーストの魅力が一層高まると感じていますまた世界的に有名なアーティストやデザイナー映画などのオマージュトーストも作っています私の SNS をフォローしてくださっている方はアーティストやデザイナーの知識がそこまで豊富でない方もいらっしゃいますただある時にこのパンをきっかけにアーティストのことを知ってすごく気に入ったありがとうとコメントをいただいて好きなものを共有できたことにすごく喜びを感じましたこちらは具材の特徴からデザインを考えたオリジナルの絵柄です。ブルーベリーのこう小さい球体だからこそできる表現を考えて行き着きました。高さでグラデーションを作っています。焼いた時にブルーベリーの香りが部屋中に広がって味も匂いも食感も最高な一枚でした。具材を買う時はいつもスーパーの安売りコーナーからチェックするんですけれどもこの2種類のブドウもちょうど半額になっていました。同じ房の,のブドウでも微妙に色味が違ったり個体の大きさが違ったりそうすると右側の写真のようにこの規則性の中にズレが生まれるんですねでそういう,こう個体差を観察できるっていうのも作る上での面白さにつながっていますどんな道具,の道具を使っているのって聞かれるんですが基本的に家にあるものででも普通の料理には使わないものです例えばこう壊れた串壊した串なんですけど壊した串だったりとかあとこうピンセットだったりとかあと太さの違う針を使って細かいあの線や文字の形などを丁寧に描いていますでトーストを作ってる時ってこう自分に向き合って集中する座禅をしているような感覚になるんですね朝5時のこう,うっすら青く柔らかい光の中で一人静かにトーストを仕上げていくっていうひとときは他の時間には変えられません毎朝決められた時間を自分のために使うことで日常に余裕が生まれてきました私はトーストを作る上での一番の楽しみは焼き上がりを見る時ですトーストの香ばしい香りに包まれながら具材の変化を観察するときトーストは作品から朝食へと変わります顔や文字直線などの全体の印象を作っている箇所には形が大きく変わる具材を使って焼き上がりの変化が大きくなるようにしていますここで皆さんに美味しい具材を紹介しますまずは左側かつお節の粉和紙を表現するときに使うんですけれども焼いたときの香ばしい香りがすごく魅力的です真ん中はイカスミです私の中ではトーストに一番合うと思っていますで、朝からヘビーなんですけれどもポテトチップスを砕いたものも美味しかったですちょっといけないことをしたい気分の時はぜひやってみてください
、これらのパートはウェブ、新聞、雑誌などいろいろなメディアに取り上げていただきました。世界中の方に見ていただく機会が増えて、インスタグラムのフォロワーは、えー、と台北、ニューヨーク、シンガポールなど、あのいろんな海外の方にフォローしていただいております。で、SNS で顔を私載せてなかったので、主語が全部「非」になっていたりしました。そしてありがたいことに枯れ山水トーストをたくさんの方が作ってくださっていますパンの形は乗せる具材にお国柄がこう出ていてとても楽しく私も拝見しておりますこうしてこう国内外問わず様々な人の生活の中に溶け込めるっていうことがパンアートの魅力でもありますで私にとってアートってこう感受性の旅の入り口だと思っていてときめきだったり驚きそ,のそういった心の動きをきっかけに自分だけの感受性の旅が広がっていく日常の生活からちょっと旅をしたくなった時に日常にあるアートに目を向けてみてくださいアートの隠れた居場所を探してみてくださいきっと皆さんの視界と心が開けてこれまで見ていた景色がぐっと輝くと思います。以上が私が今日のペチャクチャナイトでお話ししたかったことです。と大変な時期ですが、こうご参加ご成長くださり本当にありがとうございます。あとインスタグラムのページこちらになっております。これからもあの面白い作品作っていきたいと思いますので、ぜひチェックしてみてください。ありがとうございました。<笑><笑>私は。I think that's the, that's the most rewarding bit of it all.、Um, so,、uh, yeah, inspiring and, and, the and world. In your particular case, there's this art, this is fantastic art, but there's also this humor and tongue in cheekiness to it all. And also playing with kintsugi and all of these Japanese、yeah. concepts <laughs> and just the creativity of using the, not, it's not just, it's not just the,、um, the ingredients, it's, it's that kind of twist that you do with them. Which makes it so there's little fish. What do they call the little fish on the uh, uh the, the, the shirasu becoming the crane? Yeah, you know. that was so funny. <laughs> so I think that's where, but again, there's this obsessiveness to, to your work, it is really obsessive. And the, and you really, I think, I think the problem with being online right now is everybody's expecting your next toast the next morning, yeah, yeah? Mm. With, mm. S, with SNS. It's、um, mm. putting a lot of pressure on you, yeah. So Uh, you keeping up the pressure. I should follow your Instagram to know to find out. I imagine, but、uh, you have Instagram, Astrid. You have Instagram. Astrid doesn't have Instagram, she <laughs> follows mine. Okay, <laughs> um, um, uh, we've got, uh, uh, there's a number of questions coming in the chat, and at the end of the event, we'll circle back and answer some of these、uh, questions. There's some pressing uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> まあ、いろいろ後で、Let's have a little chat afterwards. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take, we're going to let you have a few minutes、uh, if you need to、uh, have, a, have, have a bathroom break or, or, or get a beer.、Um, these are our fantastic、uh, Pachacha Heineken beer bottles, which were made a few years ago. We put them up for the beer break.、Um, I'm going to just run through a few little things here. So it will be a couple of minutes if you, as I say, if you want to grab a, a drink or a Coffee or something. I just wanted to talk about our, our latest thing we've been working on, which is called Pachacha Create.、Uh, until now, the only way you can make Pachacha presentations and put them on the website is、uh, by presenting live. But now,、uh, through our website online,、uh, you click on the Create button, and our new platform, Pachacha Create, allows anyone to upload 20 images, voice them, and share them online. And、um, su submit them or push them out to the、uh, Pachacha website. Next slide, Brian, I think. So it's been a really amazing tool, and it's allowed people to make presentations about their situation, about their art, what they're doing. And Dana,、uh, who used to be an intern here at Pachacha, she was working in the US, and during Chinese New Year, she went back to see her parents in Wuhan. And、uh, as you know, what evolved,、uh, she was locked in for 76 days. But she used Pachacha Create、um, to make presentations about her experiences in Wuhan. So it's become a really amazing tool. 
Um, and it's um, Pachak is being used in universities and schools and businesses uh, all around the world. And sometimes people want to keep those presentations uh, pr private and, you know, maybe their, their, their staff presentations about who they are for onboarding. So we've built a, a SaaS model, a, a, um, um, a, so like a subscription model, where for $8 a month, uh, you can have a pro account and that keeps all of your presentations nice and tidy and private and shareable just within your group. And then there's a team, uh, um, a team product too for much larger companies. If you're doing a lot of onboarding or he headhunting, uh, you, you can use the tool there too. So it's really great if you've got a bunch of new staff coming into your office, get them to do a Pachak to table talk using this tool and you can make pr presentations on the fly, record them and store them in your little private sandbox. So that's the, that's the sell over. Um, it's also allowed us to run competitions. Um, we're doing this with uh, World Architecture Festival. It's, it's the biggest live architectural festival in the world. This year, it's going to be in Lisbon in December. Um, but we've got together with them, and we're looking for ideas about isolation transform. What does the pandemic mean? And uh, how can we be isolated in a better way? And the competition runs until the 31st of August. Um, it's free to enter. And so we encourage architectural students, product designers to submit their ideas for isolation transformed in just 20 slides voiced through Pachatra Create and you submit them on online. So again, we'll link all the de details up um, um, in the uh, blog and everything about this. So it's a really great competition. If you're an architectural student, it's perfect. And you can win a trip to Lisbon and participate in the World Architecture Festival in December. And we've been working again with Pachacha Create and uh, with bigger organizations. This is the Frank Lloyd Wright Conservancy. And we ran an online event with them. Uh, of course, all the Frank Lloyd Wright homes are closed at, at the moment in the US. You can't visit them, but they wanted to uh, raise awareness of that. So we held uh, a big Pachacha session online. We had 1,500 people in, in the webinar, which was really amazing. And um, yeah, everybody submitted their presentations through Pachacha Create. So hope everybody's got their, their, their glasses charged and uh, we're going to kick off for the second session. So I think we're back to you, Brian. Cheers, so cheers everybody. Cheers, cheers. Yeah, <laughs> hey, I need a refill, but... Hi, hi, hi. Hey, Apollo. I should get my son. Apollo, bring me a... Cheers, cheers. Can you bring me a water? <laughs> All right. Well, that was a great first set, and I'm uh, there was God. It was so so inspiring, so many cool presentations, and so let's go ahead and kick let's kickstart our second set. Um, I am going to start. Um, I'm going to introduce uh, somebody from our Tokyo community, somebody who's who who's part of an institution here, Soul Food House, <laughs> and uh, David Whitaker. I'm going to uh, a quick anecdote. I grew up going to New Orleans every uh, summer and is scarfing down chicory coffee and beignets. Thanks, pal. And uh, good night, buddy. Love you. And, um, and every year I would get deathly ill. And, and I thought I was allergic to the, 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 I thought I was allergic to the sea or something. I thought I was allergic to the magnolias or the air. And, uh, but little did I know that every time I was eating one of these amazing soft shell crawfish soft shell crab po boys little did i know that i was like poisoning myself with uh, shellfish which my body doesn't oh, take oh so um so but it was it, i i grew up loving this food and when i found out that you could get some of these dishes in uh in tokyo like cornbread and and, and chicken and waffles and and uh gumbo and um uh what else i mean i'll let i, I want uh, beans and rice and grits and uh, i don't want to say too much but uh uh, it's a, it's, I haven't been there enough, but I'm very happy to um, welcome our next presenter, David Whitaker on the stage, a, um, again, a Tokyo institution. After you, ch after you check out his presentation, be encouraged to um, go check out and try some of the things that I'm sure he's going to talk about and are going to make your mouth water. So, David, are you ready? I am ready. Thank I'm you. I'm hungry already. I know. All right. Well, I'm going to pass I'm, it over I'm to you. I'm really hungry right now. Okay. Going into this, <laughs> and you're just mentioning all this stuff that I want to eat. Um, so, thank you for inviting me to Pichacha. Um, My name is David Whitaker. I'm one of the co owners of Soul Food House. 
I am one of, like when we do catering, I'm one of the grill masters. When I'm in the store, I do floor service and I am one of the, well, no, I am the mixologist at the restaurant because I have no bartending experience, but I love making good drinks for people. It gets to the soul of the matter and helps people relax and have a good time. My wife is the head chef and she has masterminded some of the greatest food that people have ever eaten and trained staff to do amazing things being not from America. So we have a Finnish and a Japanese chef that cook according to her instruction and with their heart putting soul into the food. And I'm just going to give you an introduction to what soul food is and why soul food is what it is. Um, that's my wife. The guy in the back, which you'll never see any other time, is our Japanese chef. He's a classic, classically trained chef that can, when you say do pretty, he does that extra pretty. And this is us just showing off shirts that customers sent us from New York after they visited. They gave me Black Superman and Black Wonder Woman for her. And it was an amazing feeling that that's potentially what a customer would think about us. This is the beauty and probably the thing that most people search out most, which is cornbread. Um, this is the traditional way in a black skillet that in most families is passed down for generations. And soul food comes from a lot of farm ingredients. So being that it's mostly born out of the slave and sharecropping era. Soul food is a lot more vegetables than people think or realize. It combines with rice or pork and you have a lot of sausage involved, a lot of chicken involved. The fat from the pork is usually used to season a lot of the vegetables in traditional soul food. And my father, my grandfather was a hog farmer. So yeah, pork is life to me. Everybody else can talk bad about it, but it does so many wonderful things. Like the mac and cheese can sometimes have a bit of bacon grease in it. Ribs are amazing. Um, the fact that soul food is seen as only one thing is a misnomer because depending on where you lived, soul food changes. You saw the change from ribs and gumbo and seafood. And if you live near the coast, that's soul food. It doesn't change what it was. It's where you're from. This picture has pulled pork. My father being a hog farmer, that's what I grew up on. Like, pulled pork sandwiches, bacon, coleslaw, things that just reach my soul. My wife being from Mississippi, hers is catfish because she lived right off the Mississippi River and every Friday they would have catfish and spaghetti. And that was life for her. We combined what we did and she lives near Memphis. So our ribs, unbeatable. It's a thing of knowing how to season the food, which is a part of the soul of it because you're taking what you have, which may not be much, but you're gonna make the most of it. Like, Green tomatoes turn into fried green tomatoes because you needed something crunchy, but sometimes that's all you had in your garden. You take those, you make the most of it, you create a meal that is mouthwatering. And this is how it's served in our restaurant because when you stylize it, it makes it even more appealing, more tasty. I think that's the aioli that's a part of my hot sauce. 
but everything has to be made from scratch. Well, traditionally things are made from scratch. So at a point in Tokyo, you can't find everything. So we make it. We make our hot sauce, we make our barbecue sauce, we make our ranch and blue cheese dressing because if the consistency is wrong, the flavor is wrong. And this person went to school in Mississippi. And when he was getting married, he sought us out because he found out we did soul food and wanted to make sure it was authentic. And then asked if we hold his wedding restaurant because it, soul food is about connecting people and creating for the family and the community. This is our Thanksgiving party that we held at our house for a decade before the restaurant opened. And each year it grew because people wanted to connect with other people. Now it's at the restaurant and people still come wanting to connect with people and feel more than just by themselves while eating food, finding new people to make friends with, new people to have family associations with. So join us at Soul Food House. Come and join a bit of that community and family. We just reopened at the end of May for in-store service because COVID has separated people and this is to bring people together. Thank you for your time. And I'm sorry if it rambles, but yeah, it's a part of the passion of just communicating. Thank you. <laughs> that didn't ramble, man. Oh, I'm so hungry. So, me so too. Hungry <laughs> we'll be round. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so someone in North Carolina, Jay, said, Although he's in North Carolina, he'd come to Tokyo for this. So, um, and and then uh, Chris in Portland said, um, I, I don't know about you, Jay, but I think I'll be meet meeting you there. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, we did Fantastic. a Netflix special, and people literally did just hop on a plane and come. So, wow. It, actually, not as uncommon as thought. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, I saw you and I got a plane ticket. What? <laughs> yeah, that man's so interesting. My, my, my uncle Cyril lived on a farm and he always used to say, nothing like a bit of good pork fat, which is exactly what you were talking about. It's fantastic. Mm. All right. Brian. Yeah. Well, go get some go get some cornbread and some uh, uh, gumbo. The cornbread and, yeah, and those ribs. Holy cow, man. I, those, my mouth is watering at the side of those ribs. So... Go check out. I'm Soul glad food. you're towards the end. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> we'll okay. be around next week to see you. Sorry, guys. Awesome. Anyway, thanks for Thank taking again, time David. out, David. Uh, it's really fantastic yeah. presentation. It's my pleasure. See <laughs> <laughs> you. And so. Oh, you got a, uh, you got to go keep working now in the kitchen. <laughs> Well, I'm on the floor, so somebody asked me to move something. So, yeah. Uh, get something out of the uh, storeroom. Pass it on to the kitchen. Oh, We're no, seeing no, no. The they, action they, live. Get something out of the storeroom. I have to do something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, man. Right, you're welcome. Have a good night. Okay. <laughs> good night. Good night. Good night. So um, we're going to introduce Sakamoto-san next. Sakamoto Hi. came to Pachak tonight. Hi, Sakamoto-san. She came to Pachak tonight, and then she mailed me and said, I want to make a presentation about gray hair. And my business partner, Astrid, here, um, has had gray hair since she was 13. But I'll no, let her, quite, I'll let her kick things off. Not quite. Uh, I, I found my first hair when I was 13, and then it went all... Uh, uh, it became more and more over the years, and uh, I uh, proudly displayed it because nobody had gray hair at such a young age. So uh, everybody thought I was dyeing my hair, but no, 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 <laughs> it's real. And uh, to the day, I only dyed the hair for fun, 
uh, like you do when you're a teenager, just a bit of a pink down here, but it was all white and gray at the top. So um, anyway, I'm sure Sakamoto-san speaks from my heart. Uh, so over to you, Sakamoto-san, Jumbi Deska. Hi. 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 たくさんお越しくださっています子どもの頃の将来の夢はデザインと言語に興味があったので通訳、広告デザイナー、美容師の3つの中から選びましたプライベートでは海外一人旅が好きで去年まではアメリカ、マルタ、スリランカなど毎年海外に訪れていましたさて、今年に入って蔓延し始めたコロナウイルスこの写真は今年2月のものマスクを着用しながらのサロンワークに最初は戸惑いもありましたが今では世の中のサービス業のスタンダードとなりました7月現在は1日の予約数を決めながら手指消毒店内換気の徹底などお客様の安心安全を守りながらサロンワークをしています久しぶりにご来店くださるお客様で、2、3ヶ月ぶりに電車に乗りましたという声も珍しくはありません。さて、自粛期間や、そして今でも美容室に行けない多くの人たちがフラストレーションを抱えているのが白髪の問題。街中でも根元が伸びている人を多く見かけますね。この次はグレーヘアをお持ちのお客様の写真です。皆さんはじめは白髪染めをしていたそうですが、自分のありのままの髪を生かしたいと、脱白髪染めを決意し、移行期を乗り越えた美しい女性たちです。有名な方だと、えー、モデルな結城アンナさんや、えー、女優の草笛光子さんなども、えー、グレーヘアでいらっしゃいます。近年、10代、20代の雑誌は配管が相次ぎましたが、大人世代の雑誌はとても盛り上がっています。グレーヘアの書籍も書店にたくさん並ぶようになりましたね。一方で、グレーヘアは老けて見えませんか手入れをしてないように見えませんかなど不安の声もあるようです。それでは、これから皆さんにグレーヘアを美しく見せる3つのステップをお伝えいたします。ステップ1は、ツヤです。年齢を重ねた髪は水分が少なく、浅つきがちです。ツヤのない髪は老けて見える要因となってしまいます。では、ツヤはどうやって作るのでしょう答えは、ブローとスタイリング剤です。ドライヤーの熱はキューティクルを整え、髪の毛をツヤ感に見せることができます。また、シアーバターやオイル、クリームなどのアイテムもヘアスタイルに光沢を与えてくれます。ツヤのあるヘアスタイルは、肌ツヤも印象付けてくれるのです。表情が生き生きとしてグレーヘアを美しく演出してくれます。えっと、それでは次のステップ、ステップ2は、えー、ボリューム。グレーヘアを美しく見せるための、えー、ボリュームは、えー、ボリュームのある豊かなヘアスタイルはリフトアップ効果があって、その人を若々しく演出してくれます。特にえー、アジア人の多くは、八針、絶壁の四角い頭の形をしているケースがほとんどです。カットで頭の丸みを作ったり、さらにパーマをかけてあげると良いでしょう。ちなみに、カラーをしていないグレーヘアは、健康がゆえにキューティクルの密度が高く、パーマのかかりづらいケースが多いので、的確な薬剤選定と巻き方が必要です。ふっくらボリュームのあるヘアスタイルは若々しさと快活なイメージを与えてくれるでしょう。そして、えー、最後のステップ、ステップ3は色鮮やかなメイクやファッションです。実はグレーヘアにすることで肌色と髪色にコントラストがなくなってしまうので
、顔のパーツや輪郭がボケてしまうのが難点。グレーヘアにメリハリのある印象を与えるには、色鮮やかなアイテムが必要なのです。その一つにリップがあります。ポーっと浮かぶ色鮮やかなリップは表情にメリハリを与え、その人の印象を華やかに演出します。また、グレーヘアにはレフ板効果もあり、お洋服の色をより一層生えて見せてくれるのです。また、マストではありませんが、デコラティブなイヤリングやネックレスなどのアクセサリーを身につけると、グレーヘアをより一層華やかせてくれます。ちなみにこちらの女性は、移行期真っただ中の写真、パーマーをかけてヘアスタイルに立体感を持たせ、カラーの境界線をぼかしていました。そう、皆さんのクエスチョンは、移行期をどう過ごせばいいのかだと思います。パーマー以外にもハイライトカラーを試してみてはいかがでしょうか。それまで染めていたカラー、ハイライト、地毛の髪、白髪の、えー、ミックスカラーは、カラーの境界線をぼかし、移行期をスストレスフリーにしてくれるでしょうハイライトと聞くと奇抜だったりハイトーンのものを連想される方も多い,ので多いのではないでしょうかそれは心配ありませんその人のニーズに合わせてナチュラルなものも十分に可能なんですいかがでしたか、えー、グレーヘアを考えている方今現在白髪染めをしている方そしてこれから年齢を重ねる方に何かヒントになったら嬉しいです。今や人生100年時代、何歳になっても年齢の変化に柔軟で美しくあり続けられますように。今日はありがとうございました。えー、ヘアスタイルの情報や私の趣味の、えー、旅行の写真を載せているので、よかったらインスタグラムをフォローしてください。また、私が勤めているサロン、マグノリアのホームページのアドレスも載せておきます。グレーヘアのことや、紙にまつわるお悩みなどお気軽にメッセージいただけたら嬉しいですありがとうございましたありがとうございましたやっぱりねこのあのコロナでなんかちょっとあまだ病室に行きたいんだけど行けないなという、うん、数人っていたと思うんですけどあのでどんどんやっぱりなんかルーツが現れてきて、うん、多分今はチャンスなんじゃないかなと思うんですよね。うん、なんかあのちょっといろいろんか自分に対して考え直して何がなん,か大、うん、なんか人生に大事なのかということで。うんうんなんかあの私、もう本当にあの特に日本人の女性ってもう真っ白のなんかヘアカットって素晴らしかったら、うん、なんかもうそのまま美しいっていう感じで別に染まなくていいんですよっていう,もう私もずっと思ってたので、うん、あのだから特に今日はあの坂本さんのプレゼンテーションをとても楽しみにし,てしました。こういうメッセージで<笑>もっと広がった方がいいなと思います。Yeah, it was pretty amazing. You know, that catches your eye. And,、um, you know, what, you know, because I, I, I see people who are like hiding that. I'm like, let that fly. That looks so good. It looks great. So I, I bet you I'm not the only guy who, who thinks that. Yeah, but it's also interesting what you were saying about the contrast that, that you should not, you shouldn't wear any black when you've got,、uh, when you've got gray hair because of the co- co- contrast. Yeah. But you can wear co- color and accessories. So I'll remember that in the future. <laughs> And high definition eyebrows. I haven't heard of that word before, but anyway, Astrid was t- telling me all the secrets as we were going along. So it was great. Thank you so much for that presentation. Okay. So VJ、uh, Luna, VJ is next.、Uh, Hello.、BJ's- He's one of our, our long term friends here in Japan and another really passionate, creative pers- person that really makes、uh, the city. Uh, turn in, in the creative circles. He's always at Protection Night. 
and his latest set of photographs have been really stunning me. And again, uh, he's, he's been putting them out on social media and I keep wanting to see more and more. And I thought it'd be a great opportunity for him to share his fantastic work. So over to you, well, BJ. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, great to be here online at uh, live from Tokyo. Yes, it's, it's great, let's start. Okay, so uh, my name is Vijay and what I do is uh, as, as work, I analyze place and location data. So that means uh, a lot of things uh, of Tokyo, uh, both for companies and for what I think is a smart cities. Photography is what I like to do. It's the other side of, my, of the coin. And I usually do 360, but as Mark said, now I'm doing something totally different. And this came because of COVID. Uh, I had been like many people working at home and staying at home. And then after a long time, I took the subway and I was amazed. The, the subway looked completely different. There were very few people and I thought, uh, well, this is very strange for, for Tokyo. And it's a little bit dystopian. So Tokyo is, is a little bit of cyber all the time, but this time was, was, was very inspiring for me. So what we have here is um, ups and downs and the rights and lefts. I'm, I'm mixing things. Uh, in a sense, I'm playing with uh, gravity. Uh, and you have to look at the picture twice to realize what's going on. Um, these are two pictures of the same station in, in my line. Eventually, I get out of the subway uh, car, and, I, and then there is no people. Uh, there's almost no people there. And uh, it's very strange. This is uh, close to rush hour. This is probably in, in, in May. And uh, I'm stunned, and, and I keep taking pictures, and I keep looking at how, how Tokyo has changed. Um, Tokyo now has many more security guards and I suppose they were for the Olympics and uh, there's some construction. Uh, besides the security guard, what I would like to point out to everybody is that Tokyo subway is very, very clean. Uh, nothing is going on, but there is the security guard. The whole thing is extremely clean. Um, Tokyo has like 282 subway stations. Uh, this is amazing. And they are nice, and what they all have in common is, uh, is great signage. That great signage um, is, is, is very good by itself, but it can be a little bit overwhelming. Um, if you put into the cacophony of sounds, then it, it becomes very, very, very mind-boggling. But now, of course, there is very few people, uh, so I, I could play a little bit with, with how things look. And uh, when things get uh, gloomy, I, I think this is how, how, I, uh, how I feel. I know how some people may feel about many things. And it's, uh, uh, we have no, no exit, uh, no real exit to, to certain things. And that's playing with the pictures that I can get this, this uh, interesting effect. Uh, the other thing that I found, and I, I've been finding this for, for many months, now for years, actually, it's uh, what I call the IV Tokyo intravenous uh, line and it's a transfusion it's a uh, infusion what the hell is this this is like an alien spaceship of course it's for runoff water eventually uh, with a little bit of uh, imagination we can find the the exit of the subway and this thanks to to pecha Kucha, i turned this i usually take the pictures either square or 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 standing but this i turn it around and it's an even more interesting way to look at a tokyo subway exit this eventually oh i don't know where this is uh, this is fresh air in many ways this is ginza and uh, hey, thank you spaceship. thank you <laughs> there's a spaceship there i get out this this was real it's my first exit outside uh, when i took the subway okay so that was a great example this is a little bit sad for people who take pictures you will know that rico just saw the sanai building uh in in ginza it's across uh, from from the, the same mitsukoshi and the others uh so rico is a little bit underwater and this picture shows it like that uh, figuratively and a little bit more and what's upside down in tokyo is uh, tsukiji no no sorry toyosu market and what's behind that is the the, the land for the olympics 
uh, the whole thing has been turned upside down, and I think this this picture kind of shows the this the situation. Uh, this Olympics were supposed to start next week, and they were supposed to start, I suppose, here at the new uh, stadium. And uh, here I'm channeling Okamoto Taro um, from uh, the 1970. Um, um, Osaka Banpaku. Okay, so that's 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 uh, Tokyo is, is very interesting. I, I did a little bit of uh, telework. I, I went to uh, checked a few hotels in Tokyo, and there was this crazy place. Uh, of course, manga, manga, manga. The Tokyo. This is manga. This is Japan. This is manga. And I found a hotel almost by chance that is a manga theme. There is a film in Tokyo, but it was my the first one that I should, that I was actually able to get. This is a. a view from another place in, in Akasaka. And for people who like hotels, uh, this is great because you can see the new Otani, uh, what is the, the, the old um, uh, Tange Kenzo hotel uh, that was the Aka Prince is, is gone. And you can actually see a couple of other hotels uh, besides the APA. Here we have Ginza again, we are, and this is great. And there is, this is a Muji a store. Uh, Muji is kind of a religion. Uh, it's, it's 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 amazing. It's the the whole thing is it's just it, you know it's a Bauhaus uh, religion thing for designers. I, I I'm surprised. And there are people in Tokyo, and I'm sure you have seen people, and they are they work for Uber. <laughs> this is, yeah, Uber Eats. This is the only people that you will see in Tokyo now. Well, I'm exaggerating, of course, but this is for me. The, 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 this was great. This is in Shibuya, in um, uh, Guy and Mai, I think. Um. Anyway. And you can see here where this is going. Uh, from Tokyo Space Station, we will eventually go to this Empire Strikes Back. This is uh, my upcoming uh, series, Spaceship Tokyo. Thank you. Bravo, very interesting. Wow. That's, I mean, what's interesting, it's just such a simple idea that I've never seen before. And it makes t Tokyo totally look like uh, a space station. And I think, I think you've also, there's a way that you can, because of that technique, you can cut people out of it as well. I know that was the, the way that the project started <laughs> because space were em empty, but you can make people, places look even more empty now. Exactly, um, exactly, exactly. But I thought the one of the Olympic Stadium and uh, Okamoto Taro, that, that his, his sculpture and things, uh, was really, really clever. And uh, we were sitting here going, wow. And thank you for including our Ginza Place building in that too. Yeah, it looked like a big whale with a big mouth about to eat the Rico build, Rico building. It, it, it's, it's a great place. It's, a, it's, it's just wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. And what and are you thinking of going beyond the subway now? It looks like yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. So, so basically, what I found is is that the spaceships, which is uh, your, your building and and many other buildings in Tokyo, looked in a in a specific way. They look like spaceships, uh, like the last one that it, it looks like from uh, one of the Empire uh, Strikes Back things. So that's one possibility. Yeah, yeah. Then, of course, I want to take people, but that's a little bit harder. Yeah, if, you know, yeah, people the last don't one like was... to be cut. The last one was the Tocho, yeah? Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah, uh, Tange, Tange Building. Yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's amazing. It's, 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 it's a very interesting building. Um, and, and, well, thank you for the picture, too. Yes. Mm. Yeah, that's, no, that's, 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 uh, it's, it's amazing how that one, the other one floats, you know, like some, you know, alien spaceship. You know, it's exactly great. Anyway, so, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Great job. Arigato gozaimashita. Uh, no, have, New Tokyo, this, ne, Kore. No, 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 that's not New Tokyo. That's uh, Aaron. Who, what, uh, we have some people asking for your Instagram uh, handle. Ah, yeah. well, uh, I, I, I only use uh, Facebook. <laughs> okay, all right, fair enough. Oh, fair enough. We'll controversial. Find oh, darn. Yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> it. We are together in this. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. All right. So we're going to um, bring up our last speaker tonight which is uh, Jamie, and um, he's uh, presenting from Portland. And um, we were on a Pachacha Inspire the World presentation with him. He was the MC of the event, in fact, um, uh, uh, last, last week. And uh, we were chit-chatting chit -chat with him and realized he got a really interesting story. So, Brian, you, you're on the call too. Why don't you, 
Why don't you in in introduce Jamie? Well, um, we had a nice, uh, yeah, this is the great thing about this moment is that we get to sort of tune into everybody's check tonight around the world. And we tuned into Portland's a couple of weeks ago and it was a fantastic event. And then the theme was, uh, they had, we in Tokyo, we, we love this box of chocolates that we like, just like we had tonight, a little bit of everything. But um, every every Pachacha night around the world does a little bit differently. And uh, in Portland, that particular night, they did the this Enneagram uh, themed event. When the Enneagram is this uh, sort of mystic, apparently nobody knows where this uh, method of uh, gauging people's personality types. And there's nine different categories. And I'm I remember I'm a seven. What are you, Jamie? Jamie, you're muted. I'm going to unmute you. I'm I mean, a three, Brian. You're a three. I think threes and sevens are like oil and water. I think I'm an eight. I think I'm an eight. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, we can hear yeah, you. Yeah, we can hear you, man. And yeah, before we start, Brian, make sure you ask me about my scarf that I'm wearing. Okay? All right, J Jeremy. <laughs> we're dying to know what's the deal with the scarf. Inquiring what this? Minds want to this? Know. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, well, uh, this scarf <laughs> is made by a company in Portland called uh, Carico. Uh, it's run by a guy named Katsu. And who's from uh, Tokyo, I believe. And what they do is they, it's, a, it's the perfect marriage between Portland and Japan. They import vintage Boro fabric and I'm giving love to um, my favorite Portland brand. Uh, they, they import vintage Boro fabric from Japan and other silks and materials and make modern street fashion out of it. And it's okay. amazing. And they have a, a store in downtown Portland that looks like a museum. And uh, yeah, it's my favorite Portland brand. So I'm representing Carico. Okay, uh, on the call today. Bora Bora is yeah. the cool, is Bora Bora Bora's cool stuff. That's the uh, that's the the stuff that they wear up north, and it gets really it's the indigo dyed uh, sort of worker worker men's and worker women's clothes that they they cut up or they as it tatters and as it wears out, they build it into new things. And the more sort of like the keen uh, the well anyway, keen sugi, thank you. And the more old and the more tattered and the more re more time has been reformed the kind of cooler and more charming it is so good yeah, on you me. for uh thank bringing you. that uh into the presentation okay now <laughs> right, on, on, the, on the other things here we go okay. jamie we're gonna get your presentation going you ready yes yes all right without further ado here we go jamie mustard over to you in a world overloaded with content anything busy that can be not be understood in a microsecond before we have a chance to think is instantly discarded. Oversized Sesame Street-like images are the only way to capture attention with deliberation and certainty. We are bombarded with 10 to 15,000 micro messages a day, so we see nothing. When we are young, we communicate to each other in oversized ways. As we get above elementary learning, we stop communicating to each other in elementary ways. Research has shown that adults respond to and crave this elementary communication even more than children do. This oversized imagery is even more powerful and transfixing in a world where we were bombarded with so many messages, we were all searching for something to latch onto. When it comes to life and death, we always use oversized imagery to demand attention. Warning labels, no matter what is going on around them, stop and give us pause. Without them, we would die. Is there something about the anatomy of these images we can all use to get attention in a world where there is so much content and competition for attention and messaging that we are all now struggling to be seen. Despite the fact that there are billions of these stop signs, they continue to keep us alive. We don't smash into each other. We don't drink and eat poison when we see warning labels. Does this apply to everything? Can this be applied to art, architecture, design, advertising, inspiration, social change, innovation, or anything you might want to say to your team or even your family? Content overload is making us more invisible and we can all feel it. Scarcity of attention from us being constantly distracted is the defining business and social challenge of our time. There are lots of articles and books about the fact that we're distracted and not paying attention. What I'm concerned with is what this is doing to people who have something brilliant to offer the world and are not being seen. This applies to everything, a man with a cob pipe, a pair of boots, a tree, an art, uh, but not uh, like the best, the most known artist, but not necessarily the best in our collective. Uh, consciousness, but the most known are Andy Warhol and Vincent Van Gogh. Everything is an inst instantly recognizable block image. Gauguin, who I love, leads with the busy, but it doesn't lodge in our uh, collective consciousness the same way. We, use, we need to use block imagery to stop 
people and get them to catch fire and go into the full complexity of who we are. The, the reason every Warhol works is for the same reason a warning label or a, a road sign works. This has always been true and lies at the root of all human perception. But with the emergence of the internet in the last quarter century, absolute massacre of our senses from messaging overload has occurred. This or this. Look at the top two images and look at the bottom two images. Which two images draw your eye? I'm sure the organizers of Petra Kucha would argue that the busy images are actually repulsive. <laughs> uh, human beings have been around for 100, 200,000 years. This messaging besiege has occurred over the last 25 years, the flip of a light switch, and we've barely begun to contemplate what it is doing to us. In music, the sonic equivalent of the oversized message is the dominant repetitive nursery rhyme type melody that can be clearly understood before one has one has a chance to think. It's why Ode to Joy da, 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 has lasted three centuries and why Mama Say Mama Sama Makusa is so addictive. That's why they call it the hook uh, in music because it grabs you and pulls you in. In 1963, Martin Luther King gave what may be the most famous speech in human history. In the relatively short speech of just over 1600 words, MLK says the words let freedom ring or I have a dream approximately every 85 words. In speaking, other uh, the oversized image is a short, dominant, repetitive, emotional phrase that one can instantly understand that brings you into the complexity. Only 23 years earlier from Dr. King's immortal words, a British statement used the power of the oversized image to inspire a nation. On June 4th, 1940, Winston Churchill went before the House of Commons to garner more support against the Nazis. Churchill's closer is the oversized image is a repetitive phrase. We shall fight. We shall fight in France. We shall fight on the seas. We shall fight in the oceans. We shall fight in the air. We shall fight in the beaches. We shall fight the repetitive phrase over and over. The key to any oversized image, uh, of any oversized image in any medium is repetition. You need to repeat your oversized image over and over and over. If you repeat your oversized image over and over again, uh, you will be seen. There are a lot of people talking about how much technology is distracting us and how we are inundated with too much choice in messaging. I am more concerned with what it is doing to us and, and, and the, 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 who are not able to communicate and bring all of our beauty and complexity and uniqueness to the world. It makes us feel like we are drowning and we don't even realize where it's coming from. In 1950, we saw 250 advertising messages a day. By 1970, it was 500. By 1998, it was 7,000. Today, with social media texting, it's probably up to about 10 to 15,000. A person couldn't process 1,000, which means choice messaging overload is making it impossible for others to see you. No matter what you do, lead with an oversized image will be an oasis to those looking for you. Everything George Orwell said about overly simplistic, repetitive communication was true. In his dark, dystopian nightmare, the 1984 bold oversized repetitive images are used to manipulate the populace. Because of this, we come to think of oversized repetitive imagery as inherently bad. It isn't. It's just the way all human beings prefer to take in information. Use it for good. Uh, a Columbia University study, uh, they, were, they set up a booth in a supermarket and offered 24 flavors of jam. People stopped by, only 3% bought the jam. Then they set up a booth with only six flavors of jam. Less people stopped, but 30% bought the jam. 10 times as many people bought the jam when given a simple, simpler, more monolithic choice. Think of what happens when you put a toy block in front of a baby. To a baby, a toy block is, a, is large, but it contains an intricacy inside it that locks attention. Oversized images work because there is a primal magnetic mesmerizing irresistible force that occurs when anything complex is presented first with the overly simple and monolithic. Oversized imagery is the single most important portal portal for all complex information to be received and understood. When we can't get attention, we are given to, uh, to too much choice. We feel anxiety. We feel paralysis. We don't make a choice at all. We feel depressed or dissatisfied with our lives. The power of the oversized image gives us hope. Oversized images work and are everywhere and all around you. Linda Stone, a research, uh, who was doing research for Microsoft and Apple in the 19... 90s. In 1998, she coined the term continuous partial attention to describe how we're only partially paying attention now. So if those around you are only partially paying attention, what is that doing to those of us, those of us in the world who are trying to get attention for any valid creation? Um, any repetitive monolithic oversized image will eventually become an icon of the mind. Once an oversized image is taken in the mind of another, it ceases to be just an image and becomes an icon. This is how all icons are made. Now we can make them with deliberation and at will. People are looking for an island and an ocean of content, a tree and a forest. So not, why not give them one and inspire the world? Woo! Wow. Good grief, man. Woo! Wow. Uh, <laughs> All right. Adam, all right, thank you very much, Jamie. That was a feat, and uh, 
I wish I counted how many times you said oversized just to get the message. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. <笑>あのちょっとやっぱりなんか英語でとっても早口だったんですよね。<笑>な,いね<笑>なんかあんまりわからなかった方は多いと思いますが、えー、と基本的にジェイミーはあの,、えー、のメッセージがあの今の時代がちょっとあのインフォメーションのコンテンツってありすぎなんですね。もう全部なんかこうインプットできなくて。えー、やっぱりこう私たちって一番あの影響あるなのがあの大きなイメージってとってもシンプルなイメージがあの一番こうなんかインパクトって一番分かりやすいとか、うん、あの一番メッセージってなるんじゃないかなということで。あのだからもうあのやっぱりちょっと、えー、いろいろなインフォメーションを捨てた方がいいんじゃないかっていう,う、ねえー、なんか隠れメッセージだったのかしら、えーまあ、とにかくオーバーサイズドというのはなんか一個で大きく見せようっていうあの、えー、で一つの例がやっぱりあのお店の方ってジャムのあのレンジがあったんですね。で、えっ、ー、とそのレンジをなんかこう絞って、あの、えー、逆にそう絞ったままでなんかあの、えー、もっとあの人たちでそのジャムを買ったんですね。なんかそのあの大きなレンジであるとどれにするのかなんかわかりにくいから結局諦めてなんかあの。えー、言っちゃうんですけどでもなんかこう一個の大きなチョイスであるとなんかこう取りやすいってなるんですが。Yeah, what, what one of our clients says that you look at two, two electronic shops in Japan, one is BitBit Camera, they have 50,000 products and not many people, and Apple has 100 products and is jam packed full. You know, that's、uh, it's really oh, interesting. The Apple, an oversized image. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah, yeah.、Well, and, you know, and your friend,、uh, Clive Wilkinson, was、uh, kind enough to give me a quote、uh, for the. Can we see that? Oh. Yeah, for my book, <laughs> The Iconist. And、uh, I do it, just so you know, for you architects, since this was founded by architects, I do an entire chapter in my book on Louis Kahn and, and、wow, how he's、okay. oversized primal energy. Primal energy, or was what Clive calls super interesting.、Geometry. Yeah, yeah, yes. I'm uh, I'm totally with you. Simple and big, that's the jam I buy. All right, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I There's love a product it. there. <laughs> <laughs> We're starting a jam company together. Okay, <laughs> Klein Mustard Jam. We're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Klein Mustard Jam. It's gonna it'll be, be confusing. It'll be confusing. <laughs> it'll be confusing. <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to、uh, work on the icon a bit. <laughs> Only problem is climb, climb means small, so I'm not sure if that's a good idea. Anyway, <laughs>、okay. that's, anyway, that's a great presentation to draw things to an end. And it really has been like a box of chocolates、uh, with lots of flavors and、um, many, many、uh, threads that connect all the presentations together,、um, whether, it's, whether it's food, whether it's passion, and just, just people just producing so much stuff. It's been really amazing. There are a few questions,、um, Brian. Is that right? In the,、uh, in the,、uh... Yeah, well, I think everybody's had a chance to answer them. The, present, the presenters have had a chance, but I actually want to know let's, can we do a little rapid fire, just a real quick round of rapid fire? Yeah? Yeah, Mark, or do you want to? Yeah, go, we... go, go, go. Yeah, okay. So,、uh, no, Sasaki san, I know that you answered this question in the,、uh, in the chat, but the question is the toast that you're making.、Uh, Is are you eating? Is it all edible? Can you eat it all? Ah,、oh, Yes,、uh, I answer. I answered the questions. So, yeah. Uh, mm, uh, and, um, yes, I'm eating. Also, are you toast? Are you.、Um, somebody was asking, what kind of toast are you using? What kind of. What do, kind donut of bread? Yeah.、Oh. Okay. Japan is good. I, I'm, I'm, a toast, I'm, a, I'm a toast person too. I, I'm, I'm、uh, but the thing、toast. is, Brian, the thing's interesting in Japan is we have, we have more, more, more toasters of flat toasters as opposed to. With, so in, in England, you wouldn't be able to do this because ev everybody's toaster is vertical.、Mm. You see. So Japan,、ah, is, Japan allows、ah, this toast、ah, to、yes. be made.、Mm. All Japan toast is v e r t i c a l 
Yeah, you can make toast a few different ways, can't you? <laughs> and um, no, I do. You can do it in the oven or you can do it in the... So um, uh, VJ, somebody's asking about... Uh, oh, no, we answered that one. You're, you're not on Instagram. And uh, I had, I'm, I'm sure that you, might, you, you guys might have a couple of questions for each other, but I, I had a question for Aaron, actually. Um, on, the, on the notion of like uh, uh, making art as like a, 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 proce a, a process, the, the, the making of it being like the art itself or the, the, the process being somehow therapeutic, are you are your works like uh, are, do you start with an idea or uh, like or is it aesthetic or um, is it a feeling, an emotion that you work at, towards or like what's the genesis of like how one of those projects starts? Yeah, um, thanks. I think from my recent series uh, of works, um, let's say like the last 10 posts, um, they were based off of the uh, painter uh, James uh, or Carrie James Marshall who paints, uh, uh, you know, predominantly black um, figures uh, in kind of a Rococo uh, style. And so his nexus of imagery was um, um, essentially, uh, you know, what Jamie was talking about was inundating um, museums and galleries with just the black image. So he was talking about, you know, painting everyday life and making a whole bunch of work. And so that resonated with me um, and there was something that he realized when he was starting painting um, where he would go into museums and he would see black figures, but they were always um, in the peripheral. So what I did was I went online and I found uh, the photographs of these oil paintings, you know, from, you know, 17, 1800s. And I just abstracted that peripheral image of, let's say, you know, a Moor from, you know, North Africa or someone in some royal court. And I made it the central image. And then I built my image around there. And I think as any of the artists here, you start with an idea and then you let the idea essentially dictate where you're gonna go. So I, I started with an idea of just making this essential figure, but then you just let it, you let it, you know, I used to think it was cheesy, you let the art dictate, but it's true. I mean, you let the art dictate where you're gonna go with your, your idea. So it, it kind of morphs. I mean, the first three collages are probably the same, but then after that, you know, it kind of blossoms. So, yeah. Well, I want to get some art in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> Follow up your with stuff it. is beautiful. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Just send me your uh, address and uh, everything's for free. I send free postcards. Uh oh. With poetry. So <laughs> it's beautiful. Sometimes stuff. free is good. Not everything has a price to it. Okay. I can see there's a question for Yuri san, uh, Keichiro san. Uh, and it's uh, wondering where you get your amazing inspiration from. Tsumari, ano, Nihongo de ne? Naga, daga, ano, eto, Keichiro san no inspiration, doho kara totteru no ka te shiritai in datte. Tashka, it's so out there, you know, it's like well beyond anything uh, you see. So. Um, いや、やっぱり音楽ですよね。音楽。ええ。ミュージック。まあ、音楽は大好きなんで、とりあえず世界中のワールドミュージックも聞いてるんで。ええ。かっこいい。この間だけちょっとパンクって言ってなかったかな
Anyway, for good as I'm going to say. Oh, no, no problem. Uh, so for me, uh, I get inspired by nature mostly. Like when I, you know, you know, work on the street, I see the trees and tree, the shape of the tree looks, you know, something to me. So, you know, I kind of, you know, started uh, making a story of it and then oh. try to draw something. Yeah. Oh. And also, I like to uh, draw the, you know, the things as it is. So recently, I get inspiration mostly from uh, my garden. あ、なるほど。はい。なんかどうですか。あんまりこう今日はちょっと英語ヘビーだったんですけれども、もしあの日本語でお互いでもうちょっとなんかあの言ってたことってあったらぜひ遠慮なく言ってなんかあの話してください